Chapter 1, The Swipe That Sealed Fate in the Dim Blow of His Laptop Ethan flicked through his tinder matches late one stormy night. He wasn't looking for anything serious, just some distraction to kill the loneliness that his cluttered, dimly lit apartment seemed to amplify. That's when he came across Marianne's profile. Her picture was captivating, almost unreal, with piercing blue eyes that seemed to look right through him. Her bio was simple yet intriguing, looking for someone to explore the shadows of this world and others. Ethan, fueled by curiosity and the silent drum of rain against his windows, swiped right. To his surprise, it was an instant match. They started chatting immediately, and Marianne's texts were enigmatic filled with references to hidden places in the city and cryptic poetry. She asked if he was truly open to exploring the unknown, to which Ethan, half amused and half thrilled, replied affirmatively. Marianne suggested they meet that very night at a place Ethan had never heard of before, the old Fairwood Park, abandoned for years and shrouded in urban legends. Something about the invitation made Ethan's heart race, a mix of excitement and a tinge of fear. Yet, driven by the monotonous echo of rain and a compelling draw towards Marianne's mysterious allure, he agreed. Chapter 2, The Meeting at Fairwood Park Ethan drove through the pouring rain, his headlights barely cutting through the fog. Fairwood Park was on the outskirts of town, where the urban sprawl thing into dance and tame woods. The park's gates were rusted and swung eerily with the wind as he pulled up. He texted Mary when he had arrived, and she replied that she was waiting by the old carousel deeper inside the park. Grabbing his flashlight, Ethan stepped out into the rain, his boots crunching on the gravel path that led into the heart of the deserted park. As he walked, the trees seemed to lean closer, the wind howling through branches like whispered warnings. The carousel, a relic of joy long past, emerged from the fog, its painted horses faded and ice hollow. Marianne was there, standing in the soft glow of the carousel's abandoned ticket booth, her figure shadowy and almost ethereal. Are you ready to see what few others have done? She asked, her voice a melodic whisper that seemed almost part of the wind. Ethan, caught between a nervous laugh and the chill of the scene, nodded. Lead the way, he said, curiosity edging out his apprehension. They walked deeper into the park, the park overgrown and the air growing inexplicably colder. Marianne spoke softly about the park, how it was a thin place, a veil between realities that could be pierced on nights like this. Chapter 3, The Ritual They Stopped in Front of What Looked Like the Ruins of an Old Fountain, Its Stones Covered in Moss, The Water Long Since Dried Up. Marianne turned to Ethan, her eyes shining unusually bright in the flashlight's beam. This is the place, she said, pulling out an old book from her coat. Help me with the circle. Ethan watched, fascinated and chilled, as she began to lay out candles around the fountain's edge. She chanted softly as she worked, the words unfamiliar, a language Ethan couldn't place. Once the circle was complete, she took Ethan's hands, looking deep into his eyes. Do you trust me? Marianne asked, her gaze intense. Ethan, caught in the moment, nodded. He did trust her, inexplicably so. Marianne smiled, her lips parting in a too wide grin that didn't quite reach her eyes. Then let's begin. She started chanting louder, her voice echoing strangely against the stone and water. The air within the circle warmed, the candles flickering wildly as though in a wind, though none touched Ethan's or Marianne's skin. 
The ground beneath them seemed to pulse, a slow, rhythmic beat like a heartbeat. Frightened yet transfixed, Ethan watched as the air around him began to shimmer, the reality warping and twisting. Shadows danced at the edge of his vision, figures that watched but didn't intervene. Suddenly, Marianne's grip tightened painfully. It's opening, she whispered, her voice ecstatic. Can we see them, Ethan? The others? Ethan's eyes widened as he saw them, shapes and forms indistinct, made of shadows and whispers, circling around them, drawn to the ritual. The reality we knew was slipping, revealing something older, darker, a realm that existed alongside his own. Just as fear threatened to overwhelm him, the ritual peaked. The air snapped, a palpable feeling of release, and the temperature plummeted. The figures vanished, but the sensation of being watched intensified Marianne collapsed to the ground, her body limp as the last candle flickered out, leaving them in near total darkness. Ethan, his heart pounding in his chest, scrambled to her side, shaking her gently. Marianne. Marianne, can you hear me? He called, his voice shaky amidst the silence of the now eerily quiet park. Slowly, Marianne's eyes fluttered open, her gaze cloudy and disoriented. It worked, Ethan, she murmured, a faint smile curving her lips. They've accepted the offering. Confused and terrified, Ethan helped her to her feet. What offering? Marianne, what's happening? Who are they? Marianne steadied herself against him, her voice a whisper. The guardians of the threshold, the ones who watch over the gates between worlds. We've opened a door, Ethan. And now you are part of this world, too. You can see them, can't you? The shadows, the movements just beyond the light. Ethan looked around, his flashlight being cut in through the darkness, revealing nothing but the abandoned relics of the park. Yet, he felt it, an unseen presence, a weight of eyes upon him. He shuddered, not sure if he was imagining it or if the night had indeed changed in the way Marianne described. Let's get out of here, he urged, his voice tinged with desperation. We need to leave now. Marianne nodded, leaning heavily on him as they made their way back to the park entrance. The fog seemed to thicken with each step muffling their footsteps and dampening the beam of Ethan's flashlight, making their progress agonizingly slow. As they neared the exit, Ethan glanced back and saw figures, shadowy silhouettes, standing at the edge of the light, watching them leave. Panic gripped him, but he focused on the path ahead, supporting Marianne whose strength seemed to help with each step. They reached the car, and Ethan all but threw Marianne into the passenger's seat before jumping into the driver's seat and starting the engine. The car headlights cut through the fog as he sped away from Fairwood Park, the shadows of the trees lining the road reaching out like fingers as if trying to pull them back. Once they had put some distance between themselves and the park, Marianne's condition seemed to improve. Her color returned, and she sat up straighter, looking at Ethan with a clarity that had been absent since the ritual. What did you do back there, Marianne? Ethan demanded, his voice firm. What did we summon, and why? Marianne turned to him, her eyes solemn. I've been searching for someone like you, Ethan. Someone open to exploring the unknown. Someone who could help me make contact with the other side. Tonight, we succeeded. We've opened a door, and now we have the opportunity to explore further, to learn more than anyone has ever known about the realms beyond our own. Ethan felt a chill run down his spine. 
And what does that mean for us? What happens now? It means, Marianne said slowly, turning to look out the window as the city lights began to pierce the fog, that we are part of something greater. We can see what others can't. We can know what others don't. But it also means we must be careful. We've attracted the attention of those who dwell in the shadows. We must learn to navigate this new world together. Ethan digested her words, a mix of fear and fascination battling within him. He knew that his life had changed the moment he swiped right on Marion's profile, but he hadn't anticipated stepping into a reality so profound, so terrifying. As they drove back into the heart of the city, the normalcy of the world around him seemed like a thin veneer over a much darker tree. Ethan realized he was now part of a hidden world, a participant in a story much larger than himself. The road ahead was uncertain, fraught with dangers and wonders beyond his wildest imagination. But for now, he had Marianne to guide him, and together, they would face whatever lay beyond the threshold they had crossed. And somewhere, in the back of his mind, Ethan knew there was no turning back. The shadows had seen him, had acknowledged him, and his journey into their world had only just begun. As the city lights blurred past, Ethan's thoughts raced. The normal world seemed alien now, each shadow a potential gateway, every whisper a call from the other side. Marianne, sensing his unease, reached over and squeezed his hand. You're not alone, she reassured him. I'm with you. Hash 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 chapter 4, new realities over the next few days. Ethan tried to return to his regular routine, but the mundane aspects of his life felt trivial and hollow compared to the night at Fairwood Park. He noticed subtle changes around him, shadows lingered longer, and the night seemed fuller, as if breathing with unseen life. He could feel eyes on him, watching from the dark corners of his apartment, from behind the curtain of rain outside his windows. Meanwhile, Marianne became his constant companion, guiding him through his new reality. She introduced him to ancient texts and obscure philosophies that explained the thresholds between worlds. Together, they practiced rites and rituals that Marion claimed would protect them and allow them to explore the Shadow Realm safely. However, the more Ethan learned, the more he realized how dangerous their situation was. We've opened a door that many have tried to lock for centuries, Marianne confessed one evening as they sat in his living room, surrounded by candles and old manuscripts. There are entities, old as time itself, that wish to cross over. We must be vigilant. Hash 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 chapter 5, shadows grow one evening, as the wind howled against his windows, Ethan experienced his first encounter alone. He was reading one of the texts Marianne had given him when a sudden coldness filled the room. The air thickened, and the candle flames flickered as if in distress. Then he saw it, a figure, dark and indistinct, standing in the corner of the room. Ethan's heart raced as he remembered Marianne's instructions. He spoke the incantation she had taught him, his voice steady despite his fear. The figure seemed to pause, then slowly dissipated like smoke. But before it vanished completely, it whispered something, a name, or perhaps a warning. Ethan couldn't be sure, but the word echoed in his mind, Erebus. He called Marianne immediately. It spoke to me, he said, his voice urgent. It said, Erebus. What does it mean? Marianne was silent for a moment. Erebus is an ancient word. It refers to deep darkness, 
the kind that existed before the world was born. It's also a name used in old myths for a deity representing darkness and shadow. A chill ran down Ethan's spine. Why would it say that? What does it want? We need to be careful, Marianne replied. This might be more serious than I thought. Erebus, if it is indeed reaching out, could be trying to use the door we opened. We must strengthen our defenses and find out more about this entity. Hash 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 chapter 6, strengthening the veil in the days that followed, Ethan and Marian delved deeper into the occult, their nights consumed with rituals and their days with research. They gathered old charms, set protective circles around Ethan's apartment, and recited incantations that Marianne claimed would fortify their spirits against the darkness. But with every protective spell, the sense of danger grew. The shadows seemed to press closer, more insistent than before, as if angered by their resistance. The outside world felt increasingly distant, as if Ethan and Marianne were moving further away from reality into a realm of their own making. One night, as they were setting up for another ritual, Ethan stopped and looked at Marianne. Are we doing the right thing? he asked. Every step we take seems to draw more attention from these, these things. Marianne met his gaze, her eyes resolute. It's because we're on the right path. These entities have gone unchallenged for too long. We've disturbed the status quo and they are reacting to our threats. We can't back down now, Ethan. We have a chance to close the door for good, to protect our world from their influence. Ethan nodded, the weight of their task settling on his shoulders. Together, they continued the ritual, the candles casting long shadows across the walls, the incantations filling the air with a power that was palpable. As the ritual reached its climax, the air around them shimmered, and for a moment, Ethan thought he saw a crack in the very fabric of reality, a glimpse into the dark realms they were fighting against. He could hear the howls and whispers of the shadow entities, their voices a cacophony of rage and despair. But then Marianne's hand found his, her grip firm and reassuring. Together, they spoke the final words of the ritual, and the room fell silent, the shadows receding as if banished by an unseen force. The candles flickered once more before steadying, casting a soft, warm glow that seemed to fortify the room against the encroaching darkness. Breathing heavily from the exertion, Ethan and Marion sat back, watching the calm settle around them. The air felt lighter, as if a weight had been lifted, yet the silence that followed was thick with anticipation. They both knew this was only a temporary reprieve. We need to find out more about Erebus, Marianne said, breaking the silence. Her voice was calm, but Ethan could see the concern etched deeply in her features. This entity, this deity, it's not like the others. Its name alone holds power, ancient and forgotten power. Ethan nodded in agreement. Where do we even start? The enormity of their situation was overwhelming, and part of him wanted to just walk away from the room. But looking at Marianne, seeing her determination, he knew that wasn't an option. In the old texts, she replied, her gaze now fixed on the bookshelf lined with dusty volumes of arcane lore. We must dig deeper into the mythology, understand its origins and its desires. Only by knowing our enemy can we hope to defeat it. For the next several days, their apartment became a hub of intense research. They poured over texts written in dead languages, deciphered cryptic messages encoded in ancient scripts, 
and contacted other occult scholars, some of whom were skeptical, while others were ominously silent. Their efforts began to paint a disturbing picture. Erebus, as it turned out, was more than just a deity of darkness, it was a primordial force, a necessary counter to light, existing since the beginning of time. It had been worshipped, feared, and avoided by various cultures, each attributing different aspects and stories to its existence. The more we uncover, the less I feel we truly understand, even confessed one evening as he slumped into his chair, exhausted. The apartment was filled with scattered papers and open books, the air stale with the scent of old parchment. Marianne, who was sitting across from him with yet another heavy tongue, looked up and gave a tired smile. That's often the case with such ancient entities. They exist beyond our comprehension, but we're getting closer, Ethan. I can feel it. That night, as a thunderstorm raged outside, adding a cinematic intensity to their situation, they stumbled upon a reference to a ritual, one that purportedly could banish Erebus back to its own realm permanently. The ritual required an artifact, a relic known as the Heart of Shadows, rumored to be crafted from the darkness of Erebus itself. The Heart of Shadows, Marian read aloud, her finger tracing the lines of an old, yellowed page. It says here that the artifact was last known to be in the possession of a secret society, the Custodians of the Veil, vale, centuries ago. There's no mention of its current whereabouts. Ethan leaned forward, his fatigue forgotten. A secret society. That sounds like something out of the movie. How are we supposed to find them, let alone the artifact? Marianne closed the book, her eyes reflecting the flicker of candlelight. The same way we've been doing all this while, one clue at a time. Tomorrow, we start looking for the custodians of the veil. The storm outside intensified, the wind howling like the cries of lost souls as rain battered against the windows. Inside, Ethan and Marian prepared for the next phase of their quest, unaware of the eyes that watched them from the shadows, eyes that glowed with an unholy light. As the clock ticked deeper into the night, the boundary between their world and the realm of shadows thinned, whispering promises and threats. The battle to banish Erebus was just beginning, and the path ahead was fraught with danger and darkness, leading them deeper into the unknown. Ethan and Marianne's search for the custodians of the veil vale led them into the underbelly of the occult world, where secret societies operated in the shadows of modern society. Each clue they uncovered seemed to drag them deeper into a labyrinth of conspiracies and hidden truths. Their days were consumed by meetings with cryptic informants and nights spent in libraries poring over ancient manuscripts. Their breakthrough came from an unlikely source, a retired professor who specialized in esoteric studies, who had once written extensively about secret societies. He agreed to meet them at a small, secluded cafe on the outskirts of the city. Custodians of the Veil, the professor said, his voice low and cautious, and not just protectors of artifacts. They guard the balance between realms. If you seek the Heart of Shadows, be warned, it is not merely an artifact. It is a conduit, a means of powerful influence over darkness and light. He provided them with a map, old and frayed, Marking the last known location of the society, an abandoned cathedral in a forgotten part of the city, hidden by overgrowth and time. As they approached the cathedral the following night, the air grew chill and heavy with a sense of foreboding. The structure loomed large and ominous under the moonlit sky, its broken stained glass windows like dark, 
watchful eyes. Inside, the cathedral was vast and echoey, every footstep and whisper amplified. Using the map, they found their way to a hidden chamber beneath the altar, where the air was thick with the scent of mold and decay. Here, the walls were lined with relics and symbols of ancient power. In the center of the chamber stood a pedestal, and upon it, encased in glass, was the Heart of Shadows. It pulsed with a deep, dark energy, shadows swirling around it like liquid smoke. Marianne stepped forward, her hand hovering over the glass. This is it, Ethan. Once we take it, there's no going back. He nodded, understanding the weight of their actions. Together, they lifted the glass casing and took the artifact, the chamber immediately growing colder, as if their action had stirred something ancient and malevolent. As they left the cathedral with the artifact, the world around them seemed to shift. Shadows moved independently of their sources, and whispers filled the air, growing louder, more insistent. They prepared for the final ritual with the Heart of Shadows in a clearing not far from where their journey had started. The ritual from the ancient texts was clear and required precise execution under the night sky. As they began, the Heart of Shadows thronged in Ethan's hands, its energy flowing through him like ice water. Marianne chanted the incantations, her voice strong and clear. Around them, the wind picked up, howling through the trees as if in protest. The shadows converged on the clearing, swirling around the boundaries of the ritual circle, pressing against the invisible barrier Marianne had erected. Inside the circle, they continued the ritual, Marianne's chants growing louder as Ethan focused all his will on the artifact. With a final, deafening roar, the ritual reached its climax. A blinding light exploded from the heart of shadows, piercing the darkness. The shadows screamed, a sound not of this world, and then they were sucked into the artifact, trapped once more. The night fell silent, the wind dying down as peace settled over the clearing. Exhausted but relieved, Ethan and Marianne collapsed, the heart of shadows now quiet, its dark surface still. We did it, Marianne breathed out, her voice filled with awe and exhaustion. Ethan nodded, looking up at the stars now visible in the clear night sky. We closed the door. For now, at least. They knew the balance they had restored was tenuous at best. The darkness was held at bay, but it would always exist, pressing against the boundaries of light. In the days that followed, they hid the heart of shadows away, in a place where no ordinary soul would find it. They returned to their lives, forever changed by the knowledge of what lay just beyond the veil of reality, always vigilant, always aware. Their story spread through hidden channels, becoming a whispered legend of its own, a tale of two souls who faced the darkness and prevailed, guardians of the balance between worlds. And though they hoped never to use the Heart of Shadows again, they remained prepared to defend the thin line separating their world from the shadows, knowing all too well that some doors, once opened, are never entirely closed. Years passed since Ethan and Marianne had sealed the shadows within the heart of shadows. Their lives returned to a semblance of normalcy, yet the memory of those dark days lingered, casting long shadows over their existence. The world moved on, oblivious to the thin veil that separated it from chaos, a veil held firm by the courage of two individuals who knew too much, who had seen too much. Ethan continued his work, but his art had changed, it now carried the weight of his experiences, filled with deeper, darker themes that spoke of the balance between light and darkness. 
Marianne dedicated herself to studying the occult, becoming a recognized authority in matters of the supernatural, often consulted by those few who believed, who suspected that the world was more complex and perilous than it seemed. Together, they occasionally revisited the hidden chamber where the Heart of Shadows was secured. Hidden deep within an abandoned underground vault, the artifact remained dormant, a silent sentinel guarded by ancient symbols and protective rites Marianne had learned from the texts. Each visit served as a reminder of their responsibility, a pact sealed not just between themselves but with the world itself, to keep the darkness at bay. As age crept upon them, Ethan and Marianne knew they needed to ensure that the knowledge of the Heart of Shadows would not die with them. They began to seek out those rare, gifted individuals who showed potential and courage, forming a small, secretive group known as the Custodians of the New Veil. Vale. They trained their chosen successors in the arts of the occult and the necessary precautions to maintain the barrier between worlds. One stormy night, much like the night their journey had begun, Ethan and Marianne met with their protégés in the vault for one final lesson. The air was thick with the electric charge of an impending storm, mirroring the tension within the vault as they approached the Heart of Shadows. Ethan, his hair now silver and his hands marked with the passage of time, spoke with a voice that, though weakened by age, carried the strength of unwavering commitment. This artifact, he began, gesturing towards the silent heart of shadows, is not just a relic, it is a reminder of our duties as beings of light. It holds a darkness that is ancient and powerful, one that must never be allowed to escape. Marianne, her presence as commanding as ever, continued, you have been chosen not just for your skills, but for your courage and your willingness to stand in the gap. The world outside this vault depends on our vigilance, on our strength to resist the allure of the shadows. The custodians listened intently, aware of the gravity of their commitment. They were young, but their eyes held a maturity born of necessity. They had accepted the responsibility to guard the balance between realms. As the meeting ended, the storm outside peaked, thunder echoing like the drums of war. Marianne and Ethan exchanged a look, a silent acknowledgement of the life they had lived and the legacy they were leaving behind. With one last look at the Heart of Shadows, they turned and left the vault, their figures receding into the darkness, leaving the new custodians to their vigil. Years later, stories of Ethan and Marion became legends whispered in the corridors of the occult community. The Heart of Shadows remained secure, its dark power contained, its whispers silent. The custodians of the New Veil vale continued their watch, a secret line of defense against a world that could never know how close it had come to shadow. Five, 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 and so, the balance was maintained, the cycle of light and darkness continuing, with each generation of custodians standing ready to defend, to protect, to remember. In this way, Ethan and Marianne's legacy endured, a beacon of light against the ever-present threat of darkness, a testament to the power of human courage and the unending vigil that is the price of peace.